Amphorius is a black hole or something. Okay, okay, I know, I know, but you're here and I've got your attention. So get ready because we are diving into some next level sci-fi meets science theory here. What if Amphorius isn't just a weird isolated world, but a black hole or something similar? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I know it sounds absolutely bonkers, but let's break it down by diving into some actual black hole science. And trust me, it gets super interesting, especially when I start talking about the information paradox. Okay, so before I just jump right into the theory, let me preface this with some baseline context about black holes, gravity, laws, etc. And that way I can present the theory in a way that doesn't make me look like I've been going insane researching Amphorius lore. So what is a black hole really? They're these super dense objects with gravity so powerful that nothing, not even light, can escape once it gets too close. To escape any object's gravity, you need to hit a certain speed called the escape velocity. So if you were trying to leave Earth, you would have to go about 11 kilometers a second or seven miles per second to escape Earth's gravitational pull. But with a black hole, the escape velocity exceeds the speed of light, meaning not even light can escape. And since light is how we see things, a black hole appears, well, black. That point of no return is called the event horizon. And beyond that, reality as we know it stops making sense. The event horizon is where the escape velocity hits light speed. Cross that line. Be destroyed or be destroyed. There is no other choice. And you're donezo. Nothing can come back out. Now, this might explain why Amphorius is cut off from the rest of the universe. Its event horizon could act like a cosmic border that nothing, not even information, can penetrate. Now, we know Amphorius is not the typical type of world we're used to visiting on the Astral Express. No, it's a totally isolated world, untouched by Akavili and the Star Rail, and can only be observed through the Garden of Recollections mirror. Not only that, but observed from the outside, it resembles an infinity or Mobius loop. But when in or on Amphorius, it just looks like your typical world. But it's the way the Garden of Recollection discovered it, through reflections in their mirrors which is weirdly similar to how scientists spot black holes through gravitational lensing, where their intense gravity bends light or the information around them. And thinking in Star Rail terms, memories could be a synonym for information or data. Just keep that in mind. At the center or core of a black hole is the singularity, a point where everything collapses into infinite density and the normal rules of physics don't apply. No one really knows what happens there because our current understanding of physics just stops working. In Amphorius, the vortex of Genesis, where the core flames are offered to reset the world, could act like this singularity. It's a point where everything collapses into chaos, but somehow, from this chaos, new possibilities emerge. <clears throat> Cyrene, <clears throat> Alicia. It's the same idea scientists have about black holes potentially creating new stars, galaxies, and even universes. Amphorius could be caught in a constant cycle of destruction and rebirth. When two black holes collide, they create something called a gravitational wave. And during the merger, the shape of the system warps into something eerily familiar, an infinity loop or a Mobius strip-like figure. Sound familiar? Amphorius's world literally looks like a giant cosmic infinity sign, which could mean its entire structure might be the aftermath of some colossal black hole collision. 
But we're not talking about regular old stellar mass black holes here. This could be on the level of supermassive black holes. Now, what happens when black holes collide? They don't just smoosh together like two marbles. No, they warp space and time around them, creating ripples, gravitational waves, that stretch and compress the fabric of the universe itself. In the case of supermassive black holes, this isn't just a local disturbance, it's a cosmic event. Now, Amphorius's warped reality, its unstable time loops and dual states of eternal night and dawn, could be a direct result of these space-time distortions. Maybe Amphorius sits right at the heart of where two supermassive black holes once collided, leaving behind a twisted dimensional scar in the form of this infinity-shaped world. And it doesn't stop there. When black holes merge, they emit intense gravitational energy, which could explain why Amphorius's core, the vortex of Genesis, seems to function like a singularity, endlessly consuming and recycling energy to sustain the world. Now, here's where my brain went down this rabbit hole of black holes. Black holes and the information paradox. What happens to information when it falls into a black hole? Does it get lost forever? Or can it be recovered somehow? In basic physics, information can't be destroyed. If you burn a book, you don't erase its information. It's just scrambled in the form of ash, heat, and smoke. So theoretically, if you could collect every single particle, you could reconstruct the book. Stephen Hawking proposed that super tiny particles near a black hole's event horizon can result in one particle escaping the black hole while the other disappears into the black hole. The particles that escape are called Hawking radiation. Even more so, it's theorized that these particle pairs are also quantum entangled, meaning if you look at something about one of the particles in an entangled pair, you immediately know something about the other particle, even if they are millions of light years apart. Now, Amphorius's black tide, the thing that's driving people insane and wiping out history, might be a physical representation of this paradox. It's erasing the world's information, and the vortex of Genesis is the way of recovering that lost information for the garden. The core flames could be fragments of Amphorius's original data scattered by the black tide, and by gathering them, the trailblazer might be able to piece the world back together and recover its lost memories for the Garden of Recollection. There is also this crazy idea in physics that space-time itself might not be foundational. Instead, it could come from deeper quantum processes like quantum entanglement, like what I talked about earlier, which is a phenomenon in quantum physics that occurs when two or more particles become connected in such a way that the state of one particle is dependent on the state of the other, regardless of the distance between them. If Amphorius is a black hole-like entity, or an event produced by a black hole, it might not exist in normal space-time at all. Its strange properties, fluctuating timelines, eternal night, and dawn, could be signs that it's affected by quantum entanglement. If we think about the timelines and how the flame chase journey is halfway finished, but was halted a long time ago, as if some event or occurrence happened that essentially paused their progress. In terms of black holes, the half-done flame chase journey almost acts as the particle that got sucked into the black hole with its other half escaped the black hole stay with me, and the trailblazer and team coming in and acting as a substitute for this missing particle, rebuilding the vortex of Genesis, and in result, rebuilding the world from the scattered particles. Now, what's interesting to me is how entangled particles visually look. Imagine two swirling patterns intertwining, 
forming a symbol that looks a lot like a yin-yang sign. Now, compare that to Amphorius's infinity shape. Two loops eternally locked together, just like quantum entangled particles. This could mean that Amphorius isn't just a world torn apart by black hole collisions or something or other, but one held together by some kind of massive quantum entanglement. The world's dual state, caught between night and dawn, might reflect two entangled realities constantly influencing each other, like two sides of a cosmic coin flipping endlessly. And that brings me to my next little part of the theory. Now, remember those little particles we were just talking about? Well, instead of imagining them as dots, imagine tiny vibrating strings of energy like guitar strings. Depending on how they vibrate, they create different frequencies, which in physics means different particles, like electrons, photons, quarks, you name it. This is where the idea of the threads of fate comes from. These vibrating strings could be the building blocks of everything, forces, particles, even the worlds we're exploring. But a string theory isn't just about our good old three dimensions plus time. Try 10 or more dimensions with a bunch of them folded up so tiny we can't even see them. These little dimensions are sometimes called brains. No, not those brains. And might even form a multiverse. Now let's dig into Amphorius. It's messed up timelines, eternal cycles of night and dawn, and total isolation? String theory has an answer for that. Now in the spaces where the different dimensions interact are called brain collisions. These brain collisions can create these insane anomalies like distorted time or fragmented space. Amphorius might be one of these dimensional crash zones, a tear in space-time caused by overlapping brains. That would explain why its physics are so out of whack compared to the rest of the worlds. And let's not forget about those vibrating strings. String theory says that these strings determine everything about reality. So what if Amphorius's cycles of night and dawn are caused by unstable vibrations? It's like the strings that make up its world can't decide which way to vibrate, flipping the world between two states of existence. Or this could be the reason why the Crisis heirs couldn't finish their flame chase journey. The vortex of Genesis could even be the anchor point for all of this chaos, a high energy singularity of vibrating strings holding Amphorius's fractured state together. Not to mention the world itself takes the form of yes, an infinity or Mobius loop, but what do you make loops out of? Strings. So yeah, before I go off the rails here, is Amphorius literally a black hole? Maybe. Or maybe it's something inspired by black hole physics. A simulation, a quantum object, or a phenomenon of string theory. But that's all just a theory. A honk eye theory. And if you have your own theories, tell me down in the comments below because I would love to read what your little lore brains are cooking up. But anyways, thanks for listening to my insane crack theory my brain decided to cook up on a whim. So if you enjoyed this, hit that thumbs up and subscribe buttons, please. Anyways, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video. Once again, I am Oofy, and thank you so, so, so much for watching.